I'd like to do today is just uh, is, is dispense with the formalities of reading everybody's bios. I understand you have them in the packet. I'll introduce them in their titles, essentially. But uh, I just want to make sure that we leave as much time for the panelists to, to talk with you and, um, and for you to be able to ask some questions. I had a couple of quick notes that I wanted to say on the front end. I know we have a little bit of flexibility on time. So I want to beg your indulgence and just say a couple of quick things. Again, it is really thrilling to be here. I, I have my U.S. Uh, uh, Canadian pin on. I wear it almost everywhere. It really <laughs> reminds me of the power and the importance of this relationship. And um, in fact, I was just in Cleveland yesterday working with the Council of Great Lakes Governors on one of the initiatives that the governors set forth on Mackinac on, that, on the Maritime Initiative. We had about uh, 20 or so individuals from around the basin really talking about what that transformation of the uh, Maritime piece of our of our economy looks like so that work is ongoing I hope you've been hearing from the speakers beforehand and they're all really such compelling speakers um, I hope you're starting to pick up threads of things that we need to know to work on to drive forward together so part of this is really intended to help seed additional ideas with you and and we're going to do the same thing here about the work of the region the work of the bodies of the region um, and how we're really starting to echo this stronger and stronger voice. What I hope ultimately is that, that we compete as a region, that we work together as a region, we move forward as a region, and that actually starts to get people in other regions of the world concerned in a good way. Um, we just spent some time in the Baltic, in Helsinki and Stockholm, and looking at how the Baltic is looking at themselves as a competitive region, not just as Sweden, not just as Finland, but, but as, a, as a regional entity. Um, we are competing more and more as these regional entities, and we need to do a stronger and stronger and better, better job of really telling our story and creating our own narrative. Bill mentioned it before. It really, part of it is in terms of dislodging the old narrative. Right, figuring out what it is that we want to be, not waiting for someone to come back in and help us do it. We can do this ourselves as the fourth largest economy in the world. Creating that narrative, finding out where the impediments are, finding out where the drags in the system are. And I highlight three drags. There's economic drag in our system, there's transactional drag in our system, and there's legacy environmental drag in our system. And we need to remove all those three drags and replace our old narrative. This notion, as Bill mentioned, about a Rust Belt with what we want the world to see us as, as a deeply embedded, connected, efficient, competitive region. And with that, I think the Great Lakes and the brand of the Great Lakes, which is powerful. We already have the brand of the Great Lakes, that this then becomes a region to be reckoned. It is a region to be reckoned with, but that region grows. I mentioned I was just in Cleveland. What a fabulous city that is. Um, uh, how, how beautiful that that's becoming. I mean, we see this happening in place by place, but the transformation continues to accelerate. I wanted to highlight just eight quick, not, I'm not going to go through them, I'm going to give you a quick list. So if you're looking for more things to think about and, and how they start to tie some of the questions of the panel together, and then we'll come back to these at the end. We're seeing deep changes in agriculture, agricultural innovation and agricultural expansion. So here's context for the Great Lakes region. We're seeing deeper and embedded supply chain integration around the region. I just spent some time with two or three hundred worldwide leaders in supply chain in Dearborn just a couple of a week a week or so ago was it? Um, so they're thinking about deeper and embedded integration of supply chain. We're thinking about um, the expansion of the Panama Canal opening up in 2014. We're and the turnover of what shipping starts to look like, oceanic and Great Lakes shipping. We're continuing to see the automation of routinized work and how that works as a transformative element in the region. We're looking at the harvesting of individual pieces of information in mass, big data, behavioral data on how people are acting, where they're going, what they're doing, and how we create economic value from that. We're looking at energy transformation in our systems deep changes both in the region and worldwide and we're looking at climate effects both with its with their risks and their economic opportunities uh, that are presented there lots of things for us to continue to work on I'd like you to think about some of those and the threads we heard beforehand as we move on through um, we are going to start today with Carol Caruso who's the senior vice president at Greater Cleveland Partnership 
and the Lake Erie Metro Chamber uh, Chambers member. So, Carol. Good morning, and thank you so much for this invitation. It is a, a pleasure to be here. I'm telling you that you could replace the word Cleveland in everything I've heard today, and it would still stand true. I think the big difference right now is in Cleveland, we do not have this strong or this close a dialogue with Canada. We are trying, but you are ahead of us, and there's lessons to be learned here, so I really appreciate being here. Uh, today, I, I am with the Greater Cleveland Partnership, which is a regional um, <clears throat> chamber and economic development organization, but today I am representing the Great Lakes Metro Chambers Coalition, which uh, is new. We're one of the founding members. It, it is an organization of 40 chambers of commerce. Uh, the key ones that are driving the agenda right now are ones you all know. It is Cleveland. It's Detroit, it's Buffalo, Niagara, Pittsburgh, and others. But we have come together over the last few years because we understand that this is a region and this is our future. I was really struck by uh, President Simon's uh, comments that this is our time. We really believe that. And as a group of metropolitan chambers, we're working very hard to help advance uh, a lot of the things that you're talking about. It's really good to see that we have our talking points all consistent because uh, we're all saying the same thing, using the same numbers and pointing out the same statistics, which I think is very important. Um, the uh, Great Lakes Metro Chambers Coalition is right now mostly focused at the federal level, but we are expanding that and trying to work um, more with state capitals. But uh, we have chosen to keep our legislative agenda very tight so that we can be more effective. And right now, there are priorities our transportation infrastructure, the 21st century border, the renewal and restoration of the Great Lakes, immigration policy, and energy. And when we talk about energy, pretty much we're talking about the development of the region's nuclear, natural gas, and clean coal technology. So we have stayed with a very tight agenda. There are a lot of other issues that each of our chambers works on, but uh, we are consistent and hammer on these issues over and over and over again. It is really a pleasure to go into Washington with this group of folks, because when I walk into, for example, Mr. Dingle's office, uh, with my colleagues from Michigan and from Pittsburgh and other places. It really sends a message. And this is the first time we think that this has happened on a regional basis. So we make it a, a point that when we do go into Washington, we go together and we, I don't go to the Ohio offices so much as I do the other offices so that we can push this message forward, that these are really regional problems and regional opportunities. So um, I wanted, one of the reasons we did this, uh, it really had its, its beginnings from the work that the Brookings Institute did on the Vital Center. And we came together, uh, literally, uh, probably a couple hundred of us, and out of that meeting came the, the beginnings of this coalition, and we're pretty excited about it. Uh, one of the reasons we're doing this, and I think it's the one message I would leave with you, is that over time, our representation in Washington has shrunk. We all know this, and it varies from state to state uh, among our states, but we do not have as many members of Congress as we used to. And if I can assume that Ohio is a good example, we also do not have the clout that we used to. Some of that is just natural turnover, and I'm not diminishing at all the talent that is there today, but it does take time to rebuild those committee chairmanships and uh, positions of power. I know by just working with the Ohio delegation, we're not going to get this done, but I know that working with the delegation in total, we can. So that is really the message that I wanted to leave with you, how important it is for us to coordinate and to go into Washington and our state capitals with a combined message. And I think that we've been successful in launching that, so it's a matter of keeping that going now. So um, one, uh, I want to give you one example of how well that works. Uh, the word of bill, the uh, water restoration bill that is awaiting action in Congress like everything else in the world, uh, we were able, as a coalition, to work on specific language in that bill. We chose the language, we worked hard for it, and we got it in the bill. And that is language that will recognize the Great Lakes as one entity. 
And that sounds simple, it's not, but it really advances two things, I think. It really helps us in terms of funding opportunities for projects that are important in our region, and it also helps brand us more strongly than we are. I think people do recognize the Great Lakes as a region, but not like they should. I mean, we do not have the panache of, uh, of uh, <coughs> Raleigh in the south or, or uh, areas in California, and we're getting there. But I just think it's so important on the federal affairs and state government affairs that we work together. We were able, for example, because we do have some power in this region, and one, one happens to be in Pennsylvania where uh, the chairman of the Transportation Committee, Bill Schuster, uh, resides. We invited him to Cleveland last month, and our coalition met with him. We had great turnout, talked to him one-on-one -on -one about this, the importance of this language. And that language was not in the bill before that meeting. And we were very, very pleased with the movement that we were able to get through Congressman Gibbs and Congressman Schuster to place that language in there. So now we're awaiting action on the House floor. But I think so far that's the best example of how working together and coming in to meet as a region really made a difference. So um, that would be my message to you to continue to work together as you are. There's a lot that Ohio can learn right here in this room, and uh, I know that we will take advantage of that. But in terms of government affairs, especially in Washington now, as frustrating as that is, it's just so important for all of us to work with all, of, <coughs> excuse me, all of our members of Congress and have the same continuous message throughout the region. And that is really what the Great Lakes Coalition is attempting to do.